Welcome back to Rachel's Enchanting Cakes. Now this time I'm going to try something called a mirror glaze. Now I've never actually made this myself before. This is going to be for the first time. So I suppose we'll see how easy it is. So what you want to do first, from what I've read, you need to make more glaze than what you're actually going to need. So I've got 120 ml of water, just cold water, and four teaspoons of gelatin. And the first thing you need to do is just simply sprinkle it over the water like you would do in the fondant tutorial. So I'm going to try and keep it all nice and even, just like so. There we go. Now we need to leave this for five minutes and now we're going to get on to the next step, chopping up the chocolate. Okay, so I've gone and prepared the chocolate. All I've done is I've chopped up 200 gram of white chocolate and I've also got 140 ml of carnation milk. Now from the method and from what I understand, all we're going to do with this guys is just pour it into our gelatine mix, just like so. Carnation milk looks absolutely lovely. I haven't melted the chocolate because the next part of the recipe does involve some very, very hot sugar. And I think that is where this will melt naturally when we start to blend the mixture together. Okay, so now on to step three. Okay, so we're almost at the final part. I've got a saucepan filled here with 100 ml of water, a bowl of 200 gram of caster sugar, and this is the good old liquid glucose. You'll remember that I used it to make the fondant from scratch. This has been kept in a bowl of warm water, as you can see, because it's much easier to use. So all I'm going to do, oh, you'll also need a thermometer. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to add the sugar first, don't think it really matters which way around that you add it, and then I'm going to add the lovely liquid glucose which will be a little bit more runny, because I've kept it nice and warm, into my pan. This mixture will eventually be blended into what we made earlier with the gelatin, the carnation milk and the chocolate. So now we need to go to the stove. Okay, so step four, basically I've just got the mixture over a very low heat and we're going to continue this stir until the sugar is completely dissolved. Now this may take a while. I don't know if you can see the mixture there. But it's slowly dissolving away. I do need the thermometer at one point because once the sugar is dissolved, that's when we're going to heat this to 103 degrees centigrade to make what will hopefully finish our perfect mirror glaze. So what's all the fuss about? Well, I only found out about this mirror glaze by accident because I'm a member of a lot of cake decorating sites. It looks like it's the new in thing, so it's something that everybody needs to learn really. The only thing about it is I'm not 100% sure if it needs to be kept in the fridge. So for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to just be decorating a cake dummy. But if you've got a customer that is wanting a cake with the mirror glaze on it, because we're not 100% certain, I would highly recommend that you do keep it in a fridge. And maybe only take it out for, um, what, four hours? at a time. So that's going to be the only downfall really, especially if you've got a lovely Victoria sponge because you can have really cold buttercream inside. But because you're using condensed milk, once that tin is opened, it needs to be kept at a certain temperature just to prevent foodborne illness. Now if you can see this, it's slowly getting clearer and clearer. But there's still quite a bit of sugar left. So I'm just going to speed up this part of the tutorial and I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I've heated it up to 103 degrees Fahrenheit and you should end up with a mixture that's clear like this. The next job 
is to pour it into your bowl of gelatin. It's also got the white chocolate and the condensed milk in. So you put those to one side because that will be very hot. I'm going to move those out of the way. Now using a handheld blender, we're going to blend all of this together. Until we've got a lovely smooth mixture. And from the looks of things, I think I was right not to melt the chocolate beforehand. As you can see, I knew how hot the sugar was going to get. And it's worked an absolute treat. I'm really, really pleased with this. I'm going to give this a good blend. It does also mention in the recipe just to be careful with air bubbles. You need to make this 12 hours in advance because it is going to be left in the fridge overnight and then you need to bring it back to room temperature in order to be able to use it. But I'm actually going to colour mine before I place it into the fridge. Let's just give this a bit of a speed up. Okay, I'm really, really happy with that. It's all combined. It's exactly what it said it would do. So the next job, I'm just going to move that out of the way again, is to add some colour. So I've decided to choose to add blue to mine because we want a little C kind of thing. So just before I add the blue, I think I'm going to separate this just so we can have two different colours going on at the same time. Okay, so now it's separated, I'm going to use a sky blue in one of them. I'm not going to use too much because I'm not really sure how all of this is going to work. Because again, this is the very first time, guys, I've ever done this. Okay, so that's a sky blue. And from another tutorial I've watched, they just literally, gently swirled it around. If you want it all that colour, then you could really give it a really good mix. But I don't want it all of that colour, so oh look at that, that is looking absolutely stunning. So you just give it a nice gentle mix. I have seen somebody do this when they've put it back to room temperature before. That's probably to get more of a marbled effect. But what I plan on doing is doing two separate colours. So I'm going to do a sky blue and more of a royal blue in this one. Leave them in the fridge overnight. Bring them to room temperature and then mix them together again. Okay, so that's my sky blue Mary Glaze. Now this one I want to be slightly darker, so I'm going to use a royal blue for this, just using a cocktail stick. You can tell the shade's different straight away. It's really good to invest in all of these different colour pastes and pro gels, just so you've got them on hand. The dates are fantastic and they do last an awful long time. I'm being careful with how I mix this again due to air bubbles. I think that one's my favourite if I'm to be honest. These do need to left do need to be left to settle again, like I said, in the fridge overnight. Which is an issue. There's quite a bit of food colouring in here, so I'm just gonna keep stirring. Okay, so I'm really, really happy with that. So what we're going to do now is pop them in the fridge and see what happens in 12 hours time. Let's see if it works. Because if I can do it, and this is the first time ever, you guys can. Okay, so what I've just done, I've just taken both glazes out of the fridge that have been in overnight. What I did forget to tell you on the, on the previous tutorial is to cover them with cling film. That's to prevent them getting a crust. When you take them out, they'll be like jelly. You can either let them get to room temperature naturally or just pop them in the microwave for a little bit according to the two turns that will go nice and runny again, as you can see here. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I want to create a sort of marble effect. So I'm just going to pour this in. 
and if I decide to mix it I'm going to be very very careful because I don't want to just turn it into one big blue. You've got to remember I haven't done any of this before either. So I'm just going to do this very gently just so it doesn't completely mix in with the previous colour as you can see on the camera and I think I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't know I don't want to risk it basically I've never done this before okay so here I'm using a cake dummy just for the purpose of this tutorial what you would do with your cake is you'd make sure it was on a cake board first of all I've then placed it just on a four inch cake tin because I'm only using a small cake here and the reason I've put it in this little bowl is because we're literally going to be pouring this over the top of the cake to get the glaze effect. So obviously all the excess needs to go underneath. Let's start pouring. Okay, so whilst I just let that drip down the sides naturally, as you can see, we've got like a little pool here. Everything's going to slowly drip down. Once it starts to set, which will be in a bit because the gelatin is no longer warm and the cooler it gets, the less runny it will be. And that's what I've learned from doing this. I was thinking about jelly. You know, when we make jelly, it's still really shiny when we take it out of the fridge. Well, jelly's got gelatin in it, and I think this is what makes this so glossy. It must be the gelatin that's inside it. So obviously, it won't be suitable for vegetarians if they choose not to eat gelatin. So what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to take off the excesses off the bottom, just here. Okay, so what you can see is happening now. These drips aren't dripping quite as fast. So where your cake board would be, like I said, I've used a cake dummy. Just get a spatula and just neaten it up as it's going to slowly stop drifting, drop, stop dripping off your cake. Sorry, but isn't it a beautiful effect? Can you imagine having a cake based on Little Mermaid or Finding Nemo with all the seaweed going up the sides, but this beautiful mirror glaze on it? Just a coral reef effect, absolutely stunning. But like I say, because I'm not a pastry chef, and this has been used for a long time by pastry chefs, um, if there are any pastry chefs watching this video and you'd like to leave a comment so as cake bakers know, that would be fantastic. Can this be kept out of the fridge or do we need to keep it at a certain temperature constantly due to the condensed milk that we've used? Or, well, can it be left out and how long do we have until we need to eat it? There's a lot of science behind baking. I don't fully understand it. I had to give this mirror technique a try though. As you can see, it's worked an absolute treat. When I first saw this online, I thought, no way can it be as easy as that. But sometimes the simplest things are. So because of what I experienced when I first took those bowls out of the fridge, what I'm going to do with this is pop it back in the fridge. That will then turn into like a jelly really hard, so it will be easier to lift up and then place onto a decorated cake drum. And then, well, there was your oyster. You've learned how to do a mirror cake. So I've proved that I can do it. And I've never done it before, guys. So give it a go. Come on. What are you waiting for?